Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, a fourth year resident specializing in rheumatology. So I spent the day in clinics in rheumatology today, and now I'm switching gears, switching hospitals, heading to the intensive care unit where I'm on call tonight. Um, and I haven't had a chance to tell you guys yet, but um, I got sick with COVID over the holidays. So um, when there's a chance it's not too busy tonight, I'll tell you more about that. with you tonight. Hey Siobhan, how's it going? Yeah, we're on together. Hopefully it'll be a quiet night, but we'll see. Did you just say the keyword? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. so how's the unit? Is it uh, busy? Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. Uh, we got maybe one in Emerge, but uh, we can start with some of the beds down here. Yeah, yeah, why don't you right. tell me yeah. about them? So we got uh, we got a gentleman in bed 20. He's an 80 year old guy. Um, he's got a known history of cancer and he's coming in with a perforated bowel okay. um, and lots of uh, fecal peritonitis as well. Um, so he's post OR now, but still requiring a lot of IC level support. Okay. All right, so let's get a call room where I'll hopefully get some sleep tonight. So it's like a little bit of a maze trying to find where the room is. Ah. Ah, very nice. Okay, so now it's time for evening rounds. Now, this is a chance for us to go around, see each of the patients, talk to their bedside nurses, change any treatments that are needed, like basically see how they're doing. We start by seeing the two most unstable patients in the ICU, one with severe sepsis and the other with COVID-19. The other patients are also critically ill, but they're stable on their current treatments. So we only need to make some small adjustments to their care, like prescribing a water pill for one patient, a blood transfusion for another, and replacing electrolytes. Okay, small pause in our evening rounds. I'm gonna go upstairs and meet the Uber Eats <laughs> delivery, and then we'll continue on and eat after. Ah, <laughs> oh, and they still got the Christmas decorations up in the lobby. That's so nice. Shoot, this is locked. Whoopsies. Okay, we'll just uh, <laughs> go around the other way. It's gonna be a little bit cold out without a sweater. It's the moment where you need to be Canadian. Truly Canadian. <laughs> All right, mission accomplished. <laughs> okay, so we're done with rounds and now I feel like I have a good sense of which patients to be worried about tonight and watch a little bit more closely. This hospital, actually wasn't supposed to have COVID patients in it. The problem is our COVID hospitals have now all been filling up, uh, which is now why it's expanded to this hospital too. And unfortunately, there's a couple of very sick COVID positive patients here. Um, and one of them, I wonder if they might need to get intubated tonight. So we're gonna have to watch that patient extremely closely. And we've got some amazing nurses that are gonna do the close watch and, and be able to call us if they're worried. Okay, um, back in my call room, and I think I've got a moment to be able to update you guys a little bit. So, as I was saying earlier, my husband Mark and I uh, both got sick with COVID over the holidays. And um, I mean, we've both been working in hospitals with COVID positive patients. We've been so careful and it's so close to the vaccine, so... Uh, Sorry, one sec. Hi, it's Siobhan from ICU, returning the page. Yep, sure, I can wait. It's the emergency department, they're just grabbing uh, the emerge doc. Hi, yeah, it's Siobhan from ICU, returning a page. Are you guys suspecting um, COVID? Okay, so sort of a moderate to high probability. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Okay, I'll be right down. Thanks. Okay, bye. Okay, got my N95 on. Got my shield. 
we're reusing these throughout the day. And uh, yeah, okay, we'll get the gown downstairs. Let's go. Walking into the room, I meet a middle-aged man who presented to the emergency department with shortness of breath. He tells me that his daughter works at a nursing home and that she was recently diagnosed with COVID. And to complicate things, he also has lung cancer, which is causing extra fluid to collect around his lungs. So there are many possible causes for his shortness of breath. It could be an infection, the collection of fluid around his lungs, a blood clot, or a heart problem. So while we're sending off a whole bunch of investigations to help make the diagnosis, in the meantime, we'll put in a chest tube to drain out some of the fluid around his lungs. Okay, so back from the eMERGE, basically patient was not sick enough to need to get intubated, but definitely sick enough to warrant coming to the ICU so that we can monitor the patient really closely because things could still change. Now we've got that chest tube in and it's draining out fluid. So I'm hoping in the next couple of hours, the fluid drains out, the lungs can expand better, and then there's gonna be more oxygen exchanging and the patient should feel better and you know the vitals and blood work should also start looking better as well. Um, so we'll see, we'll, we'll go down in a little bit and check it out. Okay, <laughs> so back to telling you about when I had COVID. Um, Basically, it was a pretty crummy two weeks. Um, had the whole works, fever, shortness of breath, cough, muscle aches, ugh, it was just awful. Um, you know, I think what really surprised me the most is just by walking up a few stairs at home, like my heart rate would just skyrocket and I would be like breathing so heavily. Um, and my originally, I was thinking, okay, like, I want to share this with you guys and really show you what it's like and to film it but i just felt too crappy to do it like i was just sleeping and i my brain felt foggy and so sadly i wasn't able to bring you on that journey um but the good news is that mark and i both are feeling great we've totally recovered and i can really say that I've never felt so grateful for my health <laughs> and I think it's something that's really easy to take for granted. I am so grateful that we didn't get sicker than we were. I'm glad we didn't have to go to the hospital, that we were able to care for each other. Um, but it just gives me some insight into what millions of people have gone through um, with, this, uh, with this pandemic. So just a reminder to really stay safe. There's so much hope with the vaccines and even after having had COVID, I'm still gonna get the vaccine when it's available to me. Okay, so one of the patients that I told you about this morning that we're watching really carefully has now become very hypoxic. So oxygen levels are low and I'm meeting the uh, anesthesia staff upstairs and we're gonna have to uh, intubate the patient and uh, hook the patient up to life support. The patient's oxygen levels are dangerously low, so we need to move quickly. We've got our medications for sedation ready to go and the equipment for intubations right here. Only a few members of the team actually goes into the contaminated room, so we've got baby monitors set up to communicate without opening the door. And the intubation was successful. The patient is now in a medically induced coma, hooked up to life support. Fortunately, her oxygen levels are now starting to rise. So I'm going to insert a central line, which is basically a big IV into the patient's neck so that we can safely give strong intravenous medications to control her blood pressure and easily draw back blood work to monitor the patient. I don't know what's gonna happen, but the next couple of days are gonna be really important for this patient to see what happens. Um, and you can kind of see <laughs> all the, the signs of the PPE. Uh, it's extremely hot under all of that when you're doing these procedures, but uh, I just feel like my heart is heavy right now. And um, it's just sad talking to the family, knowing that this person's chance of survival isn't great. Um, but I really, really hope this person does well. Okay. I feel kind of amped up. I actually don't know if I'm gonna be able to sleep right now, but at the very least I'm gonna lie down and just sort of, you know, 
let it all kind of wash over you. Okay, so I um, got paged about one more patient in the eMERGE at like 4.30 or 5 in the morning, just totally forgot to film, to be honest. Um, and then came back and got a little bit of sleep. And now it is time to hand over and uh, to the morning team and to head home and get some, get some real rest. Well, there you go. Done with another call shift. I've gotta be honest, I'm leaving this one feeling a little bit sad. Um, there are just so many people with COVID. Um, so many people that are intubated, people who are dying. And um, it's just, it's, sometimes it's, it's tough to, to watch and feel like there's not as much as you can do as you want. Um, and just having had COVID myself, I'm so grateful that Mark and I have recovered and doing well at this point. Um, but I just want to remind you guys, you know, we're in this together. Stay safe. Keep going at it. I know it's been a long time. I know it's tough. Um, but the vaccine is so exciting and I've got a video explaining it. Um, so you know what? Uh, I'm looking forward to lots more videos where things start to get better in the future. Anyway, if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and I'll be seeing you in the next video. So bye for now.